Hello everybody, I am back off of my hiatus, and welcome back to Urban Rain. We now have five more missions to deal with. And that is after I constantly got my butt kicked by Alex and the game started screwing up. But anyway, here are the missions thus far. We have 53, 55, 56, 54, and 57. Well, 57 and 54 doesn't matter in that order, because we're going to get rid of them all today and clear out to the 60s. The Hell's Legions have nearly wiped out all of the random stragglers around the busy shopping district. But Alex and Park have barricaded themselves in a bar, and several members of Glenn's team have been wounded pretty badly. These two renegades are working tag team style to take him out. You're the only one who can bring an end to the standoff. I'm counting on you. Ah, you know that rule of three, right? Well, we're gonna have to beat the hell out of Park, and we're gonna have to beat the hell out of Alex for the second time. This time, they're in a tag team. Eventually, they'll join. Eventually. More like Park's gonna join in this episode than Alex. But anyway, Alex is armed with a bottle this time. Let's make sure that he doesn't use it. And as for Park, he's way too dangerous for this match. Anyway, let's just make their lives a living hell. Make sure you use Chris, or at least somebody who definitely can break legs easily. And be careful, Park is definitely one who loves to spam reversals. And keep your eye on Chris too. If you're going to use him as a partner, make sure you put the hurt on Alex. If he is getting the advantage over Chris. But if you get rid of Alex first, Alex wouldn't be much of a pro Oh god damn it, no! Ah! Oh! I know he did not just do Shiranui on me, but he just did. And now, I'm gonna have to save uh, Chris from Park. Go, 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 go! And with that, if we just gang up on Park, we've got the advantage and we've got the upper hand. Provided he doesn't kill us. Oh wait, nope, we killed him. That's a good thing. And now, let's put some more on weapon attack. Yeah, all of my stats are matched, except for weapon attack, so let's make sure it's even. That's probably what I'm going to be doing for a while. And you know what? We're almost maxed. Oh, we're not too far from being maxed out. Like, once the meter is completely filled, it's going to stop at a certain point. Anyway, let's go over to Mission 54. The Zaps have gotten the boxers cornered in a scrapyard. If we can take them out, Dwayne's crew should be able to take the city outskirts. Right now, the boxers are like a bunch of rats in a sack with nowhere to go. But sometimes, an animal is at its most dangerous and unpredictable when it's cornered. Stay alert. Well, we could pick anybody we want, but for this we're gonna get Dwayne. Why? Because Dwayne has the best weapon stats in the game. So, what? well, one of the best, until we get Alex. So, what we're gonna do is lay down a beat down on these guys. Oh, and if an enemy happens to throw their weapon, be sure to catch it. Oh, and if you get breakable weapons, they turn into shanks. That's another thing the game did not mention. See, 2x4s and uh, pipes, they tend to break. And when they break, they become shanks that you could actually do extra damage to the enemies. But as it stands right now, Dwayne just went to school with these guys. Jesus, that double bulldog definitely did the trick. Wow. Go, Dwayne. With that said, I'm just going to add some more of my weapons attack. That way, it'll be almost caught up with the rest of my stats. Let's face it, folks. The higher the weapon attack, the more damage I do to people. It's all there is to it. And the more Braddock becomes a badass. Because Brad needs to be a badass in order for to survive this game, that's for sure. All of the weaker gangs around this area have been mopped up by Katanashi's disciples. The few that remain have hit a dead end in a back alley. I want you to go and finish the job. That big guy over there seems to be freaked out and desperate because he's lost his homies. Make sure he doesn't get away. And now we get to take down an almighty! Yay! 
GDO5 is indeed an almighty, and much like most of the almighties in the game, he has an invincibility period whenever he uses the power-up special attack. Now, make sure you take the 2x4 from him, because GDO5 has one of the best weapon stats in the game. And then there's the other one. Yeah, the other almighty, who will remain nameless until we come across that bridge. Anyway... With GDO5, you just gotta focus on the body. If you can, just maul his body, because his body is the weakest part of GDO5. Other, um, Almighty, you might have to work on the legs, and there's one Almighty in particular who's weaker than all of them. You can just beat the crap out of him easily, but in GDO5's case, just work on the body. You'll be fine. As you saw there. Now then, with GDO5 out of the way, I can just add one more to my stats, and why not? Because I'm kind of OCD when it comes down to stats. I rather a balanced character than a character who has some sort of weakness. Unless the weakness happens to be in its own move sets and not in the stats. So let's get on to mission 56. I've discovered that the main force of the gang that's inciting the rioters is currently in South End. They're former military guys, so they've all had extensive weapons training. Taking them on won't be a cakewalk, but if you can flush them out, we're going to see some real changes on the streets. Take your best partner with you. Best to take a partner with me, huh? You sure about that? Okay, why not I take a partner? Come on, Katanashi, let's go. I mean, you have a weapon, they have weapons, let's beat their asses. Oh, it's Anderson! And Cooper! Ah, oh, boy. I owe Anderson an ass whooping anyway, because he humiliated me in the last episode. I will make him pay. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Anderson. I'm gonna make your life a living hell. But first, let's deal with Cooper, since he's in a way. Oh, no, 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 God damn it! Okay, that's it. All of you are going down. Just for that team-up attack. And then I say that as I'm being tossed around like a ragdoll. So long, Mr. Anderson. Now then, let's deal with Cooper. And I don't feel like hanging out with Mr. Cooper. Instead, I'm going to powerbomb him. Because everybody can pull off a powerbomb better than Kevin Nash. I'm just being a dick. And it looks like Katanashi just cleaned the floor with that one schmuck. No, I can switch over to Katanashi. But here's the thing. Unlike Brad Hawk, Katanashi and the others, their stats are set. So, if you have a weak party member, and you switch, you're going to end up having to switch back to Brad. But if you have a strong party member, by all means, abuse the shit out of him. Anyway, let's up weapon attack to him. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's going to be equal. So let's go on ahead and up the weapon attack. Nope, 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 nope. Weapon attack. Damn it, pass me weapon attack. Thank you. There we go, now my stats are equal. And now, things are right with the world. Which leaves mission 57. And it's a timed mission, as you could tell. Some street gangs are rumored to have taken refuge in a motel. Those morons are a complete waste of air. Get in there and don't let them escape. Drag them out and make them see the light. One way or another. Well, if you're so hell-bent on putting these guys in their place, how about you come with me? After all, you've been giving out orders for the majority of the last couple of episodes, and there was only one time you actually joined into the fight. So yeah, you'll be aiding me in this. And of course, we have Real Deal, Ty, and I do believe MC's around here somewhere. It's only customary that MC would show up somewhere. Oh, there he is! 
did I call it or did I call it? MC and Real Deal are like the Beavis and Butthead of this game, so yeah. Don't be surprised. Oh, and I have a broken pipe. I'm using as a shank. So yeah, don't be surprised that I have a shank. Damn it! And there goes Real Deal. And now to deal with MC. Break his leg, and he's gonna get his ass with. Oh, god damn it! Oh, come on! You're gonna get a power bomb for your troubles. Can't believe you're the last one to survive. Uh, but nonetheless, now I can just allocate all of my stats the way I want to. As they're going to end up being at a maximum position anyway, it, it's best that I'm at an equal standing right now. Ooh, optic to fire. The debacle at the bar has dealt a serious blow to Park's pride. I'm sure he realizes that his quarrel with us was just a misunderstanding, but he had gone too far to back out. Park wants to settle this old score man to man, so go now and honor that challenge. He'll probably come around to our cause if you slap him upside the head hard enough. Soften him up for me to go talk to him afterwards. Like they say, the more the merrier. Well, there's the rule of three, and now Park is officially going to be a member of our team after we beat him. That's if we beat him. Yeah, come on! Ah, uh, now we're in an open area, which means now it would be in your best interest to run away from Park instead of being up close to him. Because Park will go on a Taekwondo Assault, as you see here. In case you haven't noticed, he's sort of like Huarong. And he is kicking my ass. Badly. Damn it. Alright, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Take this. I don't know if that helped, but you know what? I don't care. Damn it. Be careful, Park loves to reverse! And unfortunately, when he catches me from behind, it's kind of hard for me to actually get my timing done right. But nonetheless... Ah, damn it, Park! I'm gonna send you straight to hell when I'm finished. Take this! Ah, uh, he's almost done. Come on! Come on! You can beat him! Damn! Now I know what that's like when I do that to everybody. But it's okay, because Park is defeated. Whew, that was close. As far as I'm concerned, you might want to play the keep away game with Park. So yeah, we now have Park on our team. Too bad we're not going to be able to use him, because in the next mission, he's going to be literally out of... No, he's going to be literally not able to be used. That's what I meant to say, yeah. Alright, then let's go. Out of all the outsiders, Miguel Estevez is the only decent one of the bunch. He's intelligent and industrious. He's getting involved in shadowy dealings to earn cash for him to establish a territory to call their own, so that his friends do not need to lose their lives on petty disputes. But he was a very bad boy yesterday. He pissed on a parked car and guess who was riding inside? Yours truly. Let's just say I saw something completely unimpressive. In every sense of the word. He got away at the time, but we got info on his whereabouts from our crew. Get over there and take him down. And now the game literally takes a dump on Miguel. As he is actually a boss! I don't know what to make of this! <laughs> <laughs> Except, it's two on one, beat his ass! That's all you gotta do! This is the easiest mission in the game! <laughs> oh, I needed that laugh! I needed that laugh because that was- this is so freaking hilarious! You guys don't understand, for those of you who are just now joining me in the Army Man LP exhibition, Miguel would normally appear with his posse, and his posse would tend to attack, and he'd be the first one to be killed out of his posse. 
almost every single episode, and now he's a boss. That was the most pathetic boss fight in the game. I, I don't even have the words to even describe it. it. It just beat him up. That's all. Anyway, enough laughing aside, now we've got number 60, which is Truce. And, yeah. We're gonna have to deal with that. Clark has agreed to join forces with us. I ordered him to wipe out a rampaging mob downtown. Unsurprisingly, he copped a bad attitude. I can't blame him, really. After all, I'm teaming him up with you. Someone who recently kicked him to the curb. But when push comes to shove, Park will be a big help. If for some reason he gets the feeling that you're not looking out for him, he'll go back to being a lone wolf. So don't do anything that'll change his mind. Once his job is done and we've earned his trust, then we can really team up with him to clean up the urban areas. When that happens, you can be sure that their boss won't stay silent for long. Now go and smoke him out. Oh, sorry ladies and gentlemen, I was laughing off screen, which is why I'm short of breath. But because of the fact that Miguel was actually a boss in that mission, it's just hilarious. But all joking aside, Park has the worst weapon stats out of your team. But he definitely have a damn good physical stats with his kicks. So if it comes down to it, Park would definitely be your go-to guy to disarm thugs. And also to beat up a large crowd of unarmed guys. Other than that, it would be best to bring either Dwayne Glenn or Katanashi for this. Or even Shun Ying, because I think she has a high weapon stat too. But everything else in Shun Ying pretty much sucks, which is why I would be cautious to bring her along. Well, except for her strikes and stuff. I mean, her defense is just terrible, though. That's why I haven't used her in a while. <laughs> anyway, I just did a windmill backbreaker on the poor sap, and now it's time for us to deal with Bane. Who, unfortunately, doesn't know what his plan is. Why? Because I just kicked him in the head and made him forget. Anyway, we are done with this episode of Urban Rain. In the next episode, we may end up meeting Alex for the last time and beating him. This is RP Man 985 It is good to be back. See you guys in episode 172 next Saturday.